For years, the NBA has seen an influx of generational superstars come through the league. From the Jordans, to the Kobe's, to the LeBron's, to the Harden's, and also the KD's. Every single decade, there comes a new crop of superstars to take over the league. It's only natural. That's why it's called evolution. When the game moves forward, the players tend to follow suit. And judging from these playoffs, it looks like the league is in great hands. In my humble opinion. Now before I start this video, you see this fit right here? This is a major thank you to this video sponsor, Shop Fly Supply Clothing. It has an amazing and stylish catalog of t-shirts, hoodies, and crewnecks, all available in male, female, and unisex. They have all you need to stay fresh. They also have a variety of promotions going on, such as free shipping to orders $55 and up. As a gift to my viewers, you can enter in the code FLYSUPPLY20 for an extra 20% off your order. Once again, that is code FLYSUPPLY20 for an extra 20% off your order just to stay fresh for the rest of the season. Only at Shop Fly Supply. Have you ever heard those old stories about when Michael Jordan first retired? A lot of old heads said they were through watching the game entirely. They did this without acknowledging all the new crop of superstars that will soon grace the league. And just so enough, as soon as MJ left, you had Grand Hill, you had Penny Hardaway, Shaquille O'Neal, you had multiple, multiple talent superstars in order to take over the torch. And I feel like that's what's happening in this league. A lot of folks are saying that they will stop watching basketball as soon as LeBron retires. A lot of LeBron stands I know will cry tears of sadness as soon as he walk away from the game. As his prime years dwindle, there is a real reality of a, of a league without LeBron. And it's coming pretty fast. First we had Jason Tatum, a 6'10 slick scoring athlete from St. Louis, Missouri. He is crowned as the next great Celtic of this generation. Coming off an impressive playoff performance where he went solo against the mighty Brooklyn Nets and averaged 30 points, 6 rebounds, and 5 assists. We saw flashes of greatness from Tatum all series, including the crucial game 3 where he dropped 50 points in the Celtics victory. His talent is extremely evident as some of his footwork in his moves resemble the late great Kobe Bryant, whom he was very close friends with. You went from the great Larry Bird to the late great Reggie Lewis, Paul Pierce, and now Jason Tatum. That's the next great Celtic of this generation. Next, we have a player that I've been following extremely closely since high school, Trey Young. And we all seen what he done to those poor Nick. Shut. Wow. He completely annihilated them, averaging nearly 30 points per game and nearly 10 assists per game as well, while shooting a variety of threes from either 30 feet, 35. It doesn't matter how far he'll take it, Trey will still knock it down. Trey's bag runs extremely deep, and he has the potential to become one of the best point guards in the Eastern Conference, if not the best. And he doesn't hold his tongue for everybody. Quickly dubbing himself as a new New York killer, he embarrassed Knicks fans with multiple great performances, and you also have to let him know at the end. Every time Trey kills you from deep, you can't help but think of the one of the greatest shooters of all time in Stephen Curry. You can see both of their games kind of intertwine off of one another. His attitude, confidence, and persona is tailor-made for the bright lights. And for a big city like Atlanta, it's nothing but a perfect fit. Next, we shift over to the Western Conference to one of the most competitive point guards that our league has seen in a long, long time. And his name is John Morant. His intensity was never in question since we saw him make the run he did at Murray State, as he was putting on a hell of a performance during the NCAA tournament. And as soon as he walked into the league, Cats knew that he was gonna bring damage. And for the Memphis Grizzlies, he brought that grit and grind nature back to the team, as he had a stellar playing performance against San Antonio and Golden State. If you look up in the history books and research one of the youngest players to ever score 40 plus points in a playoff game, you have Magic Johnson, LeBron James, Luka Donich, and guess who's number four? John ja Morant. At only 21 years old, in his second playoff game, he annihilated the Utah Jazz. And if you want to hear another crazy stat, John ja Morant scored 151 points and dished out 51 assists in his first five playoff games, making him one of the fastest players in NBA history to achieve such a feat. Mind you, the dude is 21. This dude's talent is all over the roof. We don't know what his prom is gonna become. And so far, he's definitely checking off the boxes as a dynamic point guard. Now staying in the West, we're moving to a player that I'm really extremely high on, and that is Luka Doncic. 
he just capped off an amazing series against the Los Angeles Clippers. He made sure that his presence was felt, averaging nearly 36 points, 7.8 rebounds, and 10.5 assists. The, I mean, this dude literally willed the Mavericks in seven games, regardless of his supporting cast not picking up the bill. He also capped off a game seven by scoring 44 points and dishing out 12 assists making him the youngest to ever score 40 plus in an elimination game. He also scored and assisted over 77 points in a game seven, which is the first time that feat has ever been accomplished. Now at 22 years old, Luka Doncic has become one of the best players in the NBA. And I said a long time ago, around two seasons ago roughly, that he was the best guard in the NBA. And the way Luka's been hooping so far, I feel like that prediction has become 100% true. And just imagine Luca once he turns 27, 28. Imagine how scary his prime will be then. Luca is an intriguing part of the faded 2018 draft class, which featured other stars such as Trey Young, like I mentioned in the beginning, DeAndre Ayton, and Michael Porter Jr., who are both stepping up in extreme fashion during these playoffs. Michael Porter Jr., he just capped off a game six against the Portland Trailblazers. We had an amazing first half by scoring 25 points off of nine shots. That's insane. Now moving on to another player that I'm extremely high on as well, the man Deep Book. I mean, I feel like he is a player that has been slept on for years and years just because Phoenix has a sorry record and the franchise never surrounded him with a competent point guard. Now fast forward to 2021. He teams up with Chris Paul, they're on to the second round of the playoffs. The dispatching of champion Lakers in the process Devin Booker has shown an extreme offensive repertoire that leaves the defense's head spinning. He has a dribble pull-up. His mid-range game is efficient, and not to mention his three ball is one of the slickest in the league. Devin Booker is known to be a proven scorer, and he's achieved a record as one of the fastest and youngest players to hit 5,000 points for his career. And that number has since doubled. His career in the playoffs has started in an explosive manner due to him moving on to the second round and he is averaging 30 points per game while doing so. He also has a real legitimate chance to make it to the finals this year. Due to Phoenix finishing the second seed, their road to the finals seemed pretty, pretty clear. Steep, but still clear. His game six against the Lakers was one of the best I've seen during these whole playoffs because he looked like nobody was stopping him. I mean, he was lighting him up from three, pulling up from 30, driving to the rack and drawing a foul. LeBron was even real enough to give Devin Booker his jersey post game, signifying that the torch has officially been passed. And not only to Devin Booker, the rest of these stars on his list deserve that jurisdiction too. And for everybody complaining about the leads not gonna be the same when LeBron leaves or who, when KD leaves, I say just sit back and watch the games. And one flaw that I do have a problem with is the NBA's promotion of all these new stars. The league has been so long ago for Stephen Curry and LeBron James for the past five years or so that they neglected all the other young stars and the work they've done. So I'm afraid these finals coming up might be one of the lowest rated we ever seen. However, as far as competitiveness and the showcasing of the new superstar talent, I feel like it's a big win for the NBA. Decade after decade, there's always been a new crop of superstars eager and ready to take the throne. And with these new crop of guys coming up this year, I feel like it's evident that the future is now, in my humble opinion.